9.2 is finally here, which means it's time to log in and start your relaxing grind for best in slot gear, right? Of course not. This is Shadowlands, and that means having a PhD in Wowhead to actually understand what the hell is going on. But not to worry, because we did all the work for you. And instead of sorting through 20 different guides on 8 different websites, we have everything you need to know in this quick update. So sit back as we show you what you need to be doing in patch 9.2. But before we get into it, we wanted to remind you that we have over 700 guides available right now at skillcap.com slash wow. Every season, our website gets used by thousands of arena players just like you, and the results speak for themselves. We're so confident in your ability that we offer a money back guarantee if you don't see rating gains while actively using our website. So don't delay. If you want to push rating fast this season, check out skillcap.com slash wow today. You've probably heard by now that Season 3 will allow you to wear two legendaries at the same time. Yes, you heard that right. Every player will now be able to wear any one of their class legendaries, while also benefiting from their Covenant legendary at the same time by equipping new Belts of Unity. So this means Kyrian Warriors can have a Legion Might on a legendary belt, while also having a second class legendary equipped on another slot. But of course, you won't be able to instantly log in and buy your new legendary belts because it involves a new zone and reputation grind. Zareth Mortis is the new daily questing zone looking to replace Corthia and the Maw from previous patches. When you log in, you should get a quest pop-up leading you to this new zone. There, you should immediately start a new chapter quest line that will progress you towards purchasing your legendary belt. Just like in previous patches, this zone will also have daily and weekly quests along with rare spawns to farm reputation for a new faction called the Enlightened. Doing your chapter quests alongside your dailies and weeklies is important because once you hit Revered with the Enlightened, you will be able to learn a legendary power called Unity, which will allow you to craft a Covenant legendary on any slot, not just on your belt. From previous PTR data mining, it will take a maximum of 28 days to hit Revered, but rewards will be gated early on by campaign chapters, and the first three chapters are available for completion during week one, so start them early if you want to minimize your work later on. Double legendaries are expected to be available after chapter 7 during week 5, but you should start grinding reputation and completing chapter quest lines as early as possible. After you complete the first 3 chapters in week 1, you will be able to complete the weekly patterns within Patterns Quest, which replaces the Shaping Fate weekly from Corthia, and you should continue completing this weekly for reputation and other rewards. The rep grind will also allow you to unlock conduit upgrades if you're behind. Oh yeah, by the way, conduits will now have a higher item level cap. Alternatively, an upgrade item called Vessel of Profound Possibilities will be available as a reward for hitting elite rating in Arena or from PvE achievements and can be purchased from the Covenant vendors inside Oribos. But outside of legendaries and conduits, Zareth Mortis will also be one place where you can start grinding Cosmic Flux, which is the new currency you will need to upgrade legendaries. Don't worry though because it is quite plentiful in the zone and is rewarded from wins in PvP and in PvE from killing bosses. Cosmic Flux will also be awarded from Torghast, which might be useful to farm if you have multiple legendaries that need to be upgraded. You might need to recraft your legendary if it is in the belt slot already, or if it shares a slot with your helmet, shoulders, chest, gloves, or leggings because of new tier sets from PvE. Wait, tier sets? PvE? I bet you're wondering, will I need to do any raiding this season? The short answer is no, but one reason you might want to raid is the reintroduction of tier sets and set bonuses. Yes, every spec will now have unique tier sets with special bonuses that can be acquired from the new raid with a token system. But don't be alarmed, because tokens will also be available as rewards from the weekly vault for completing mythics, raids, and from raided PvP. So if you really want to min-max at the beginning of the season, we highly suggest fully capping your vault every week by including mythic dungeons and raids into your rotation for a chance at getting tier pieces or weapons in the early season. Mythic dungeons will also reward 272 item level gear, which is equivalent to challenger level conquest gear inside PvP, meaning you can have a small eye level advantage over your opponent the first week of the season if you get lucky with mythic drops. Tier sets are coming with a new system called the Creation Catalyst, which will allow you to convert Shadowlands Season 3 gear into tier pieces of the same slot. This will have a cooldown and will require Cosmic Flux. When converted, items will maintain their item level and stats. You're probably asking, okay great, so will tier sets be best in slot in PvP? 
For some classes, it's definitely going to be an advantage. Fire Mages, Windwalker Monks, and Demon Hunters all have exceptionally good set bonuses, and they might outperform PvP gear by a noticeable margin. Mileage will vary by spec, however, as some classes will probably be better off using PvP gear if their set bonuses aren't directly beneficial in Arena. And of course, there is always the possibility of tier sets being either deactivated or nerfed in PvP in the future, so right now it's impossible to say with certainty whether or not you should be pursuing these pieces. The same thing applies to new raid gear. Although there are some pieces with really interesting effects in PvE, there is always the possibility of PvP specific tuning being applied in the coming weeks. Take this new priest specific ring for instance, currently it gives a proc of over 400 intellect which is over twice the amount given by the on usage badge trinket. This might be due for a bit of a nerf, but with all these changes, one thing that isn't that different is PvP gear. Of course, a new season means higher item levels, and the same upgrade system from 915 will carry over to 9.2. Unranked Conquest gear has a baseline 262 item level in Arena and will scale up to 285 with elite upgrades. All of these new systems shouldn't change the way you pursue PvP gear at all, and the same gearing rules in previous patches will still apply and that starts by capping Conquest every week. The season won't officially start until March 1st, so you should spend your first week doing all of your PvE chores and capping Honor before you start playing Arena. We highly recommend prioritizing your weapon as the first Conquest purchase, assuming you don't loot it from the Great Vault in the weeks before it is available for purchase with Conquest points. There are some new trinkets being added in the patch, starting with some fresh damage and utility options. Cosmic Gladiator's Resonator is basically a grenade that deals targeted AoE damage after a slight delay and might work really well in control heavy comps like RMP. Two other trinkets are slightly more niche, with Eternal Aegis being a new defensive option into spell damage and a new Malediction trinket as a counter to healers with damage absorption. There are also two new CC related trinkets being added to the unique medallion slot with Fastidious and Echoing Resolve being potential disruptions to the meta in 9.2. We covered these trinkets during their initial reveal, which subsequently was met with some flavorful thoughts from the community. At the moment, we think Echoing Resolve might actually be one of the most game-breaking trinkets ever introduced in PvP, as it essentially makes targets immune to every other CC effect at the cost of every crowd control lasting 20% longer. It will make specific CC combos like DB Sheep or Stun into Freezing Trap much more difficult to land. But if one thing has been consistent throughout Shadowlands Season 2, it's that the Medallion Trinket is probably still king. It is hard to imagine the Shadowlands meta without a reliable CC break, but Echoing Resolve might affect decision making for very specific matchups. Okay, so let's just condense everything we've covered into a short checklist that you can easily follow. If you just want to play casually, you should still prioritize doing the first three chapter quests in Xerath Mortis, while continuing to do the bi-weekly Patterns Within Patterns quest as often as possible until you hit Revered Reputation. Then you should queue Arena or RBGs every week, ideally unlocking as many vault slots as possible for the highest chance of getting a weapon or high cost conquest piece. And if you really want to min-max, we highly suggest following the same route while also completing mythic dungeons for increased chances of getting tier tokens from the vault every week, which of course can also be acquired from raids, which we only recommend if you really want to try hard in the early season. Finally, you should make sure you stay honor capped every week, as you will still need to use honor to upgrade conquest gear once you hit raiding benchmarks. And for all you altaholics out there, don't worry as almost all the new systems and reputation are account bound. All you have to do on your alt each week is to make sure you keep up to date with the secrets of the first ones campaign. The first three chapters can be skipped as long as you've already completed them on your main. Just go to Orbos and Bolvar will generously give you this option. From there you can just jump into PvP and make sure you cap weekly to remain up to date with gear. Speaking of remaining up to date, if you are looking for a one-stop shop to level up your gameplay this season, look no further than skillcap.com slash wow. For prices as low as $4.99 a month, you can get instant access to over 700 videos, including our exclusive arena commentaries, where pro players guide you through some of the toughest matchups and teach you how to avoid key mistakes, preventing you from gaining rating. Joining now will also give you access to the premium section of our Discord, where our team of pro players can give you on-demand help with everything from matchups to macros. We've been in the business of PvP for over 10 years, and with a money back guarantee while actively using our website, you have absolutely nothing to lose. So check out skillcap.com slash wow today. Alright guys, that about wraps it up for this update. We hope you learned something useful, and we will be here to help throughout Season 3. As always though, thanks for watching. See you soon.